Now let's go around the league. And I know the Philadelphia Eagles hired Jim Washburn, one of the greatest line coaches from the Titans, to come in and take over their defensive line. What do you see out of Philly's defensive line so far? Well, after they're, they're losing to Atlanta and Atlanta, I know the Philadelphia fans right now don't want to hear anybody talk about the positives. But when I watched that game, I was so entertained by the defensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles, the way they were just rushing upfield, manhandling the offensive tackles. I believe Trent Cole, Colin Jenkins, and Jason Babin, yes, I said Jason Babin, could be the best three-man defensive end rotation in the NFL. It, it was a joy as an ex defensive lineman just as a football fan it was a joy to watch the way they were getting not only after the the running back but the quarterback and there were plays that they didn't show up on the stat sheet they didn't make a tackle they didn't make a quarterback sack but they dominated the man in front of them Trent Cole had an amazing game I don't believe he registered a sack but he just stood out in that game if you watched it this time last week everybody in the country Blasting Tony Romo. He's a choker. He can't play in the fourth quarter. Now everybody's praising him for his performance against San Francisco. Where do you stand? Well, right now I'm cautiously optimistic about what he could do this year. I think he somewhat redeemed himself in that game against the San Francisco 49ers. They were down. They were down big. And he went out with an injury. They're saying that he fractured two ribs, punctured his lung, but he still came back, threw for over 300 yards, and led his team to a come-from-behind victory. And I think that is very impressive. I don't care what you say about what he's done in the past. Anytime you go out because you have a fractured rib, a punctured lung, and you come back and you lead your team to victory, you have to give him his props. You have to give him his credit. But I think the big test is going to be in the future because already they're reporting that Des Bryant might not play. Miles Austin is ailing. Felix Jones is hurt again. So when you talk about big players being hurt, everyone's going to have to rise to the occasion. It's going to actually hold true for the quarterback. Parity's already evident after two weeks. We don't have a whole lot of unbeaten teams. There's going to be even less because some of them play. Are you impressed by the 2-0 teams so far? Yeah, so far there are six 2-0 teams. It's the Houston Texans, the Patriots, the Washington Redskins, the Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, and the Buffalo Bills. Out of those six teams, I think I'm most impressed with the New England Patriots. Right now, they're still having some issues on defense. San Diego scored 21 points, but you know what? San Diego is one of these teams that has an elite w uh, wide receiver in Vincent Jackson and an elite quarterback. So I don't mind them putting up 20 points. I just like the way Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are leading that team. And yes, I'm saying Tom Brady and Bill Belichick in the same breath, though one's a head coach, the other one's a quarterback, because those are the two leaders of the team. And anytime they're working together, I think that team it is a team to beat. They're one of my favorites to make it to the Super Bowl, and I just like what they've done early in this season. But I, I want to get your take. Out of those six teams that I just mentioned, which 2-0 and o team has impressed you the most? Buffalo. Season? Buffalo scores 41-38, and 38, wins at Kansas City, gives up 35 in the first half at home against Oakland, pulls it out on a fourth down pass. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been incredible, and uh, everybody loves the Bills. You know, nobody dislikes Buffalo. Everybody does. I think it's great for the league when the Bills are good. And Brady, Brady was MVP last year. He had 36 touchdowns, only four interceptions. And now he's off to an even better start. But remember, they had home advantage. They were 14-2. and two. They have lost in the playoffs at home in each of the last two years. So they could go 16-0 and 0 again and not win the Super Bowl. But they sure are fun to watch. Now, my worst team, you're talking about your best 2-0 team, the Kansas City Chiefs, 10 and 6, made the playoffs. Charlie Weiss left to go to Florida. They take an old offensive line coach, Bill Muir, and make him the coordinator. They change everything about the way they don't throw the ball down the field anymore. They lose Eric Berry, their great young safety. They've lost Jamal Charles for the year. They have give, been outscored by an average of 40 to 14 wow. in their last four games, including the playoffs. Can you find a worse team in the league right now? I would have to look long and hard, but just like you were talking about the way they're losing, it doesn't look like they can score. And they have a pretty good quarterback in Matt Castle. And for them not to be able to produce, it, it, it's shameful for the Kansas City Chiefs. They say Todd Ailey could get fired after three years because he's kind of a raving lunatic anyway, <laughs> and he's gone crazy. But uh, he made a bad mistake when he moved Bill Muir to offensive coordinator. Now, I think we're both sitting here in shock at how the Ravens went to Tennessee yeah. and got beat up by the Titans. What's up with that after the way they started so great against the Steelers? I'll tell you what's up with it. And you ready for the oldest cliche when it comes to the NFL? Let down. No. 
any given Sunday. You know, these guys all get paid. They're all professionals. Any given Sunday, any team can beat any team. We just talked about who we both feel the Kansas City Chiefs are the worst team in the NFL. There's going to be a week where they surprise us and beat a good team. So I was very surprised that Baltimore Ravens lost to Tennessee the way they did. I was expecting them to be riding high after defeating Pittsburgh, and I didn't expect them to overlook anybody because they have too much leadership in that locker room. So that was a huge surprise with the Tennessee Titans defeating and dominating the Baltimore Ravens. They let Matt Hasselbeck beat them. They just have that great pass rush. Hasselbeck took them up and down the field, threw for like 360 yards, only had 10 incompletions against the Ravens. That, that was just shocking. Don't forget, Matt Hasselbeck used to be one of the premier. Well, I know uh, he used to be, but he, last year he had 12 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. And he was and hurt. Se and Seattle only offered him a one-year contract. Because he was hurt. He's healthy now. Now this is a healthy Matt Hasselbeck. I just realized, talking about bad teams, Seattle's another one. <laughs> what did you think when you saw Jay Glazer's report on Fox that Peyton Manning had gone to Europe to get stem cell treatment, which is still illegal here. There's been another one that T.O. has gone to Korea to get it, and so they're trying to rejuvenate something in his neck. What do you, were you surprised? I was very surprised, and what that tells me is that this thing is very serious and that Peyton Manning feels like there's not too many other options for him to go to a different country to get a treatment that they don't even realize or make legal here in America that, you know, this isn't just a, a potential season-ending injury. This could be a career-altering injury. I, I think we will see Peyton Manning on the field again, but I don't know if we'll see the pre-injured Peyton Manning ever again, and that's a shame because Peyton Manning is good for the NFL. That would be horrible if Peyton Manning had thrown his last pass. Now